2 Samuel there, going to be in there this morning in chapter 16. As you're turning there, let me just express a few things. Israel, his first king, King Saul, had died, and David is appointed the king. Let me ask. Who is this David? (laughs) The Bible speaks more of David than any other character. Even after 3,000 years, David the king stirs our hearts. David was daringly, we might say, courageous. But he was also degradingly carnal. And so it is with you and me. Our victories raise us to new heights. Our vices plunge us, each one of us, to new lows. Now David, God's holy word, is presented to you and me, introduced to us as a shepherd in the beginning, and then a soldier, and then a singer the sweet psalmist of Israel. Amen? By the way, each vocation, not only David, but of you and me, is equally vital. It brings about the making of a man or woman. David's great sin with Bathsheba. Let me say something. Yet, as great as David's sin with Bathsheba was, yet greater is his repentance. Oh, listen. In 2 Samuel, don't have time to read all about it, but there was a man of God named Nathaniel, or Nathan, that is, Nathan. And he came and he told King David, he said there was a certain rich man had many flocks. And there was a certain poor man who had one little old ewe lamb And a traveler came to that rich man, and that rich man took, and with his many flocks, he went to that poor man that had one little ewe lamb and took it and slaughtered it for this stranger. And King David got so angry, he said, that man shall surely die. And the man of God pointed his finger at him and said, you're the man. Oh, listen, King David, he was an unusual child of God's. He had 37 what they call mighty men. Hard to envision, but there's a man, Adino, he slew 800 men at one time by himself. There was another mighty man in David's army, Abishai, he slew 300 mighty men at one time by himself. One time in battle, David's army fighting an enemy. David was thirsty. He told three of his mighty men, he said, oh, I wish I had a taste of that water, the well of Bethlehem. And you know what? His three mighty men broke through that enemy line to the well at Bethlehem, drew water, and came back and broke back through that line and gave it to David. And David realized that his three mighty men had risked their lives just to get him a drink of water. You know what he did? He poured it out on the ground, and the scriptures tell us so plainly that he poured it out unto the Lord. Yes, there was many events in David's life. He had his firstborn son, Absalom, that moved to usurp the throne of David. And so therefore, rather than David, fight him in Jerusalem. David and his people, many of them, left Jerusalem and uh, There, as they left Jerusalem, 
Absalom took his army and began to pursue him. And so that brings us to our story this morning in 2 Samuel chapter 16, verse 15, or verse 5, rather. 2 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 5. five. And when da King David came to Baharum, behold, thence came out a man of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimei, the son of Gera. He came forth and cursed still as he came. And he cast stones at David and at all the servants of King David and all the people and all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left. And thus said Shimei when he had cursed, Come out, come out, thou bloody man and thou man of Belial. Verse 8. The Lord hath returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose stead thou hast reigned. And the Lord hath delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom the, thy son. And behold, thou art taken in thy mischief, because thou art a bloody man. O oh, Shimei. Uh, we'll look at him a little bit here. But the whole thing centers around King David being tried. You and I are going to be tried <clears throat> as we go down through life. And uh, there will be trials. And Shimei had no love at all for David. He cursed him. He disrespected him. He lied about him. He said he was of the devil of Belial. But all of these were lies. Shimei says David was responsible for King Saul's death. He knew David had never shed a drop of blood of Saul's family or house. By the way, when King David heard that King Saul and his son Jonathan were killed in battle, you know what he said about Saul and his son, he said they were swifter than eagles, stronger than lions. He loved them. Oh, listen, had a good word for them. The Lord, by the way, is using Shimei to perfect the good work in David's life. And when you and I have trials, God, is wanting to perfect a good work in your life and mine as we have tests and trials. You know, in Genesis chapter 50 over there, and let me read Genesis chapter 50 and uh, verse 20. And this is talking about the young fella, 17 years old, that his brother sold, his brother sold him into slavery, Joseph. But after it was all over, you know what he said? Genesis 50 and verse 20. But as for you, talking to his brothers, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Oh, if we could just somehow have a faith, a trust in our Lord that trials are brought about to make something out of you and me. And not only do we see the trials that David had, but we see his temperament in our scripture. Verse 9 and 10, back in 2 Samuel chapter 16, verse 9, we see his temperament of David. Then said Abishai, you remember who he was? He was the fellow that slew 300 men at one time by himself. Uh, then said Abishai, the son of Zariah, unto the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord, the king? Let me go over, I pray thee, and take off his head. And the king said, What have I to do with you, ye sons of Zariah? So let him curse, because the Lord has said unto him, Curse David, who shall then say, Wherefore hast thou done so, uh, yes, uh, David's heart, we 
we see his temperament, his real spirit and heart. This man, Abishai, one of his men said to David, let me go off and take that fellow's head off. Wanted to start a little war there, amen? And uh, David said, let him curse. Oh, where did David get this kind of temperament? Where did he get it? Well, the psalmist said in Psalm 18 over there, Psalm chapter 18 and verse 35, and let me read, please. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy right hand hath holden me up, and notice Psalm 18, 35, and thy gentleness hath made me great. Oh, listen, we just learned to back off of things, be Christ-like, be gentle. Nehemiah put it this way in Nehemiah chapter 9, over there, Nehemiah chapter 9 and verse 16 and 17, <clears throat> Nehemiah 9, 16, but they and our fathers dealt proudly and hardened their necks and hearkened not to thy count commandments and refused to obey, neither were mindful of thy wonders that thou didst among them, but hardened their necks, and in their rebellion appointed a captain to return to their bondage. But notice, but thou art a God ready to pardon, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and forsookest them Yes, the temperament of David, a sweetness about him, realizing God's gracious, amen? God's been good to you and me, and uh, we need to uh, have that kind of spirit dealing with others. And then let's look at the triumph of David here. We see it in chapter 16, back in our and uh, there in 2 Samuel 16, verse 11 and 12, please. And David said to Abishai and to all his servants, Behold, my son, which came forth of my bowels, seeketh my life. How much more now may this Benjaminite do it? Let him alone. Let him curse. Notice, title of our message today, For the Lord hath bidden him. Verse 12, It may be that the Lord will look on mine affliction, and that the Lord will requite me good for his cursing this day. Yes. Let's see the hand of the Lord in this. David's basically saying, let him alone. Let Shimei curse me. God has something in this for me, he's saying. And you know, for you and I to have this kind of spirit and heart and uh, real strength spiritually, it all starts with salvation. Amen? Getting saved. Then after that, of course, uh, having been born again, John 3 and verse 13, I believe it is, you must be born again. But Once we're born again, listen, then we can go on and we need to confess Christ publicly. And I say this here now, if you've uh, never been saved, you must be born again in order to ever go to heaven. We'll talk about that later maybe, but... Dear friend, after that, we need to be baptized. When the preacher puts you under water, you know, baptism is not sprinkling. <laughs> That's not found in the Word of God. The word baptize means, baptizo means to plunge under. You ladies baptize your dishes every day. Amen? And some of you men. <laughs> and uh, so when the preacher puts you under the water, and the water flows over you, you and I are testifying to those that are watching it and to our Savior that we believe Christ died for us and was buried. 
When we come up out of the water, we're testifying we believe Christ rose from the dead. Amen. And that someday he'll raise you and me from the dead. And so get saved. That's where it starts for you and I in this economy. Then we need to confess Christ publicly in baptism and uh, become part of a local church. Matthew 28, 19, and 20 spells it out plainly. It said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Tell them how to be saved, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And then he says, teaching them after they get saved and in a local church like this one and uh, teaching them how to live the Christian life. So for King David and you and me, we have faith that God is watching over his own. Amen? You're here today and you've been saved. God is watching over you and me. And so we not only saw the trials that come in life, David's life, we saw his temperament, he was gracious. We see his triumph, he uh, really is not wanting to fuss and fight back. And verse 11, of course, talks about his tongue once again, that last phrase or two, let him curse for the Lord hath bidden him. Uh, you know, the Lord's bidden him, he says. The Lord's in this. That's what you and I need to recognize. The Lord is in things that are coming about in your life and mine. And uh, Proverbs 16 and verse 1, need to watch our tongue like David did there. The preparation of man preparation of the heart in man is of the Lord. So what we say comes from our heart. Proverbs 24 and verse 29, say not, I will do so unto him as is done unto me. We don't have to fight back. You know, the Lord can fight our battles. And uh, you know, I've told you this before, some of you need to hear it again, but... <laughs> My mother <laughs> told me when I was just a child, she said, you're going to have to give an account of every idle word and deed. I never said a word till I was 13 years old. And, uh, folk, let's, let's be careful. I was thinking this week when I was a college student, Midwestern Baptist College in Pontiac, Michigan, I was working at GMC Truck and Coach, and I had witnessed the people on the job and give them tracks, and one day a fella came up to me and got within about two inches of my face and, and cussed me out every name in the book. The next day, I came to work, and I saw him over there with a little crowd of people, and he didn't know I was close by, but I heard him say, the preacher sure knows how to turn the other cheek. You know what? Graduated from college, Jackson and I went into Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and the Lord used us to start the Bible Baptist Church of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And while we were there, I got a letter from him. He had gotten saved. Oh, listen, there's a God in heaven that uh, knows what he's doing in your life and mine. Now, folk, King David's heart we don't have time to deal with it like we'd like, but uh, Absalom, his son, his soldiers caught up with him, and his men. And Absalom was riding a mule, had pretty long hair, got his hair caught in a tree. The mule rode out from under him. He was hanging there. One of David's men took some poisonous darts and threw into his heart. Some other men came down and took him out of the tree and killed Absalom. But I want us to see David's heart here, please. David's heart. You uh, go with me to chapter 18. In verse 33, before we read, let me say this. You know what King David said to his soldiers? Don't 
hurt Absalom. Don't hurt him. Just capture him. But his soldiers didn't stick to that. And when David, King David, heard that his son had been killed, 2 Samuel chapter 18 and verse 33, please. And the king was much moved, and he went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he went, thus he said, O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would God I had died for thee. O oh, Absalom, my son, my son see his heart, his true heart. Yes, and then he got back in the palace, down in chapter 19 and verse 4. They could hear the king, but the king covered his face, and the king cried with a loud voice, O oh, my son, Absalom, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Yes, Trials, our temperament, pretty important, what you and I are really made out of. Triumphs in life, yes, but our tongue also. 